Welcome to Laguna Woods Stories. We're uh, a little different uh, format today. We have three guests instead of the usual one. And uh, these are three people that you should know because they're very significant uh, players here at Laguna Woods in many ways, but especially in a project called the Village Centenarian Project. We'll be getting uh, to that uh, a little bit. But first, let me introduce the players. And uh, seated directly across from me is Mark Rabinovich. Did I say that right? You were close enough. Yeah, say, it, say it for us. <laughs> Rabinovich. Rabinovich. Halloween okay. at the end. Okay. Which? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mark. And uh, 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 people here have seen your work and probably seen your name in the newspaper uh, and that probably. sort of thing. Yeah. Also sometimes known as courtesy photo. Yes. But, um, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, they've probably not seen your face because your face is often covered up by this uh, device in front of you. What, what do we have here? We have a Nikon D850. And uh, very often we see the big black area in front of, in front of your face. Uh, yes, most folks don't know what I look like <laughs> <laughs> without it, and, yeah. And, and here's, uh, here's Mark with, without the camera in front of him. Uh, Mark, your career was in sales, as I re remember. Correct. Has nothing to do with photography. Not a thing. So how did you get interested in the whole field of photography? Uh, when I was, a, like many of us, when I was a kid, I used to play around with a camera, hmm. got into sales and started traveling the country and couldn't mess with a camera anymore. And, when uh, I retired, first place I went to was a camera club here and I picked it back up. And you ended up being president of the camera club for I sure did. quite a few years. I've been, I'm still on the board. It's been nine years now. Nine years. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, we appreciate your work and uh, we'll be talking a little bit about what you're doing with the uh, Village Centenarian project in just a, just a few minutes. Wonderful. But anything, any still image that you see uh, is a, a something that Mark has, uh, has done. And uh, sitting uh, right next to Mark is uh, uh, Lucy Parker. And uh, uh, Lucy is a colleague here in the video club and a past president. That's true. Of the yes. video club. And I happen to know that, that uh, your career was uh, in the field of public relations. That's true. Communications, corporate communications. And, and mm. one of your uh, places of employment was uh, Chapman University. That's true, for quite a few years. And uh, Chapman uh, pulled a rabbit out of a hat, so to speak, in, in uh, transforming itself from, from a little-known yeah, kind of denominational did. college to certainly one of the most prestigious colleges in Orange County. Yeah. Uh, and, and they didn't even have a film school when I was there, but yeah, they certainly they, do now. They, they do now, yeah. And uh, you had a lot to do with, with uh, all it takes to make that happen. Without PR, without advertising, nothing happens, right? Well, we like to think that, yeah. No, it, right. uh, it, it was, they had the concept back in the day I was there, but it's, begun, it's been realized now it's, it's under uh, Jim Doty and some story. other leaders. And uh, uh, currently, you do PR for the video club. I and, do. And again, at the video club, nothing would happen if, if we didn't <laughs> see your frequent reminders, emails, and uh, uh, stories in the Globe, Thank and you. all of that. We appreciate the uh, constant work that you're doing to. Well, it's, it's a great club. Video club. Like Mark, I, uh, I had worked with communications all my life, but not with video, mm -hmm. still photography, print. And uh, so it wasn't until I retired that I was able to get into video, and that's thanks to the video club. So mm -hmm. I do appreciate that. Sitting uh, to my immediate right is Betsy Martin. And uh, uh, Betsy, uh, if I were to ask you career-wise what floats your boat, it would be... Water. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Literally. Literally, I was yeah. in the water purification business for 30 years. Uh-huh. It was... Uh, in it was a very exciting career, and then I uh, taught junior college the mostly men who work in the field for the cities uh, doing water distribution. Now, water is free because it falls out of the sky, <laughs> but it's <laughs> not, not free collecting it and, and uh, distributing it and all of that. So what part of this whole water business uh, did you do? Orange County Water District has... Okay percolation basins and we we uh, we take the water that comes down the Santa Ana River and soak it into the ground create groundwater mm -hmm. from which the cities pull and then the water district maintains the, the quality and the quantity of it mm -hmm. and I was working in 
taking uh, secondary treated wastewater, making mm -hmm. it into drinkable water, wow. so that we could also add to the underground water. Hmm. Okay. And uh, since you've retired and uh, uh, shown up here in Laguna Village, uh, what floats your boat here? <laughs> Several things. The video club was very attractive to me because when I finished, just about finished my career, I was taping some instructional uh, videos for other operators who could not attend these training classes on all the new equipment that mm -hmm. we were learning. And I recorded it, but I didn't edit it. Mm. So I'm sure it was absolutely boring as heck. <laughs> so I said, okay, I'm here. I'm going to learn how to edit stuff. So that's why I and got here, did. and I love it. And I know that uh, for several years you have been, from time to time, doing a program called... Uh, Remarkable Lives. Remarkable Lives about... Well, I'm also very uh, active in Concerned Citizens. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, social justice group for promoting good government, the environment, social justice, peace. And we, uh, we featured some of the elder people in that group who have been around and have been very active in social uh, issues, social causes all their lives. And these are programs that have been seen on, on uh, Laguna Wood's own uh, village television. I believe. I should check into that. And... Yeah, okay, yeah. And, and other places yes. uh, as well. Well, we're here to talk about the uh, Village Centenarian uh, project. I'm going to start with uh, Lucy because I, I think you are the absolute prime mover on, on this. How, <laughs> how, did, how did it happen that, that we got into this project and what is it? Well, it's, uh, we're photographing some of our centenarians. I, I and Mark and I both are members of the uh, Thrive Task Force, mm -hmm. which is kind of dedicated to showing, the, the, inspiring people to to thrive here in the village. Uh, and not always things are not always good, but they're, if they're not good, there's a lot of support, and mm -hmm. uh, it, there's just so many opportunities to be vitally involved. And we were looking for things to, that would demonstrate that. And I happened to see on online. Uh, a Czech, uh, in the Czech Republic, a photographer named Jan Langer uh, did a series, of, did pretty much what we're doing now. Mm -hmm. He took co contemporary pictures of some people who were over 100, mm -hmm. 13 of them, mm -hmm. and matched them with pictures of, of these people as young, young adults. Mm -hmm. And I said, we could do that. Mm -hmm. And I proposed that in, uh, in May of 2017, I think. And uh, everybody thought it was a good idea. And mm -hmm. I, we couldn't have done it without Mark. I, mm -hmm. Because we had to have really good portraits, and uh, so he said, "Yeah, he'd, he'd he's on board." Everybody thought it was a good idea for you to do. Well, <laughs> and I tried to do it, but you know, and I, I respect this. The village just doesn't give out people's names; so that's that's confidential. Mm -hmm. So I went from office to office to office asking for lists of centenarians, thinking maybe we thought there were maybe fifteen, twenty, maybe twenty, at and the most. Uh, yeah. finally, mm -hmm. I was after going to the IT and. Um, marketing communications and every place else, they sent me to recreation. And it, it turns it out... It turns out that uh, uh, knowing somebody's age is confidential information. Exactly. And there as is their address and phone number and email and all that. So they couldn't give it to me and they explained that. And But they said, we will send them, give us a letter. And it, it went out over Brian Gruner's signature. Uh, we will send a letter and see if they want to participate. And this was um, early, uh, during the summer, I think. Yeah. And so... Uh, lo and behold, there were about 78 of them, <laughs> so, way more than we thought. So we know that there are 78. We don't know the names, uh, contact. Well, I still don't them. have all those names and yeah. never will have. But, but those who responded. in touch with, with us. Or... Those res some responded. We had about five or six who responded mm -hmm. to that first letter. And then we've been beating the bushes. People who know, uh, you know, th there's been some publicity on Channel 6 and on uh, Village Television and mm -hmm. elsewhere. Now in the Globe, some wonderful coverage. Right. So we now have uh, 15 lined up, and we've shot, as of this morning, 11 of 11. them. Okay. We, but what we were adding to what the Czech photographer did uh, was a, a, a video interview, which we have the mm -hmm. capability to do here. So that'll be a TV program uh, with interviews of the centenarians. Mm -hmm. But the original uh, idea was stills. Is that that, that right? was the original idea. That was the original. That was the genesis of this whole thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And talk to us a little bit, Mark, about uh, what's involved in, in getting still pho uh, photographs of the, these uh, centenarians. The hardest thing is posing them. Mm -hmm. Some of them are very hard of hearing. Mm -hmm. um, and so we've started like today. We started to move their chairs uh -huh. instead of moving them. Uh -huh. uh, and then it's me finding the right shooting angle. Now we to match the early photo. The early we photo ask them close. to bring in a photo of themselves right. taken at a, at a younger age, right? And they they do that, and and you, you we try to pose them as close as we can. To so you that. take a picture of their photo. I uh, yes, uh, uh, both and them and their photos, so that when we finish the project, we will have an, an old photo of them when they were young and a new photo of them when they're seniors. Mm -hmm. And what do you expect to do with these uh, photographs that you're taking? Well, kind of the same thing that the, the Czech fellow was, uh, was doing, just making people aware of what we have here mm -hmm. with regards to the, the population. If, if you look at the two faces, it's, it's mystical. It draws yeah. you in. Mm -hmm. One of the things that uh, apparently Jan Langer stressed was even though things are so different, a hundred years later, <clears throat> you know, 20, 80, maybe eighty years, yeah. there's a lot that's the same. Mm -hmm. And you mm -hmm. and you just look at their eyes, and you know, right here, hmm. it doesn't change. Right here, the hair color the, changes, but the uh, eyebrows mm -hmm. tend to remain the same. The nose, the eyes, certainly their eyes are, are worn from mm -hmm. from use, but. It's just something, right? And you try to get the, the face. basically the same expression that they were showing—a big smile. Or Close to it. Yeah, we try. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, we don't always succeed, but mm -hmm. you can still see people. Betsy, you have in front of you a, a, a newspaper. What's that about? In the Globe, um, in March, mid-March, this this month, mm -hmm. the Globe featured a, a three of the people we interviewed with their picture from, from their 20s and the present in the same pose yeah. that Mark just explained. <clears throat> there were quotes in here from various people and it's just, it has inspired others to come forth and call me mm. and suggest, oh, mm -hmm. my mom is 102, um, love for you to interview her. And I think it's given us great publicity for our project, yeah. for which I'm grateful. So this was run both in the Globe and in the Register, actually, the yes. same, same oh. story. Oh, the you didn't Register. Know that. I yes. didn't know that. It went into the Register <laughs> yeah. also. Mm -hmm. uh, Betsy has played just a key role. Oh, my goodness. The fact that, uh, that she worked with these seniors, the very elderly people in their 90s, with the concerned citizens, mm. she was the obvious person we went right to her because we, need we needed one person as a liaison right. between... And so she can tell you, she's called all of them, arranged transportation, uh, our interviewers always wanted to talk to them in advance, yeah. so she sets that up. We have two interviews, we can talk about that later. But It's a pretty big deal, isn't it, bringing a hundred-year-old person into our studio? Yes, especially when they say, um, well, golly, I cannot make it on a Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. Because <laughs> they're too busy. And, too and busy. Not, they're all too busy. And it's not just doctor appointments. <laughs> wow. One is going to a jewelry class. Another one is going to the gym. I said, whoa, I better get off my behind and <laughs> do what you're doing. Um, they've been very inspirational. Um, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Lucy, I, I, I know that... Um, uh, that you have made a, a video that that, that uh, well, we we came across a, an, an article that basically suggests that attitude makes quite a difference in yes. how well we age. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that and, and, and your video. We'll we'll take a look at that. Oh, good. Okay. Uh, Steve Carmen uh, was a member of the, of the task force too, the Thrive Task Force, and what, we were always looking for ways that yeah. to show you know, especially some a scientific. Proof, and this was an article uh, from the Berkeley Wellness Letter mm -hmm. uh, about research at Yale, which uh, 
they, they studied, it was a large, large sampling, over 4,000 seniors, <clears throat> and measured them by standard tests as to whether they had a positive or negative <clears throat> attitude toward aging. Mm -hmm. And at, at the start of the study, none of them uh, had dementia, but uh, uh, and not very, there was a significant difference after four years of the ones, the positive versus the negative attitudes in the development of dementia that was really quite striking. So I was very taken with that and thought, I could turn that into a what they call an explainer video, mm -hmm. uh, use, and I, I was also intrigued with this a little op, uh, thing called Doodly, where you've probably seen it, where the uh, uh, the hand writes as you know as the. Mm -hmm. So that's. Um, so I we're going to take a look at okay. the, at your video about three minutes, and Thank and you. Uh, it'll explain the concept well. In 21st century America, some people think being old means being frail, helpless, and irrelevant. Studies of older people have actually linked exposure to negative stereotypes about aging with poorer mental and physical performance. Research has shown that, at least in the short term, even subtle differences in the way older people are treated, such as being spoken to very slowly or being patronized, can result in underperformance on cognitive tests. Now, a study from Yale University has looked at the topic from a different angle, how having positive attitudes about aging may help protect cognition in older people and even reduce the risk of dementia. The study involved 4,765 seniors, average age 72, whose attitudes and beliefs about aging had been evaluated using a standard test. At the start, all of the participants were free of dementia. Over the next four years, participants with positive attitudes about aging had a 2.6% risk of developing dementia, while the risk of dementia for those with negative attitudes about aging was 4.6%, nearly twice as high. How might positive age beliefs help reduce the risk of cognitive decline? The researchers hypothesized that such attitudes may buffer against the damaging effects of stress. But where do we get positive age beliefs? Attitudes about aging are largely shaped by our culture and life experience. Yes, the way we think about aging can be a self-fulfilling prophecy. So, uh, Lucy, uh, 
the conclusion I think of this video is that attitude makes a huge difference. Huge difference. In, in how well we age and especially uh, the frequency of dementia. Uh, yeah. uh, among people who had a good attitude uh, toward and, aging, dementia only occurred about half as much. And there, the researchers, as I say in the video, uh, why would that be? And they hypothesize that it's because of less stress. Mm. We were able to show that video at the uh, Health and Wellness Expo that was held um, last week in March, mm -hmm. uh, latter part of March, and I think there were about 900 people came to that thing and we mm -hmm. showed it at the Thrive table. So that, I was happy about that. So revisiting the idea of Thrive, uh, the, the idea really is to help people thrive by knowing what other people here are doing to thrive. It's uh, planting ideas in people's heads mm -hmm. that maybe I can do that too. Yeah. So we, we have a television show, we, we, we do different things. We're going to be doing some PSAs, mm -hmm. public service announcements, yeah. uh, on the idea of get off your behind and get out and do something <laughs> and you'll probably live longer and better. Thriving. It, it, of all the people that we have interviewed so far, that to me, and it may be to the rest of us here, the main theme is, I still like being here. Mm. Right? Positive attitude. Positive, has, yes. Has I been, still like being. I still like being. <laughs> That's part of it, too. A reason to get but up. But they haven't, they haven't come up against, I don't want to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. Life is still fun. No, I, and they want to be here, just like Betsy said. They do. It, it's inspirational. The I, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. You know, when I look at these people and the, the enthusiasm they have for their life, their surroundings, their caregivers, their children, mm -hmm. if the children have not predeceased them, which <laughs> is yeah. sad and yeah. well, sometimes the case. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, hmm, do I want to live to be over a hundred? Sometimes I'm not sure, but, mm -hmm. but with that, so many of these people mm -hmm. have pretty good health, and um, mm -hmm. they 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 love it. To put it another way, uh, we don't necessarily control how long we will will live. No. But if I should happen to live to be a hundred, <laughs> I would hope that I will be in my right mind and, yeah. and is still enjoying life That's at that right. point. Yeah. So. Lady, lady, last week told us all that she just, she held up a hand and she said, state of California just gave me five more years on my driver's license. <laughs> she was 102. She drives oh and gosh. lives alone. There, there was a perfect example of that, uh, what we were just talking about today in today's interview. Mm -hmm. uh, this lady has an 11 year old great granddaughter yeah. and she, she's just so taken with this kid. She's talented mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. you know, just bright and uh, she, very involved in this child's life, and she says, "I just hope I can stay a few more years to see her grow a little older." Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that—that's the kind of thing that you're not living in the past; you're engaged in what's happening around you. What have you all learned from your association with these centen centenarians? The village and everybody I speak to about this project are in awe of these people. There's a reverence for age, and especially people who are who are very mentally with it. Mm -hmm. um, and even if they're not, um, we we value their experience, their wisdom, and how they did it. So mm -hmm. often, it's it's healthy food. It's a good attitude, and they keep engaged. And I, it's, these are lessons that we all want to hear and try to emulate. What an amazing hundred-year span these people have lived yes, through. Yeah, that too. Literally from horse and buggy to jet plane. Uh, Rockets. Uh, uh, horse and oh. buggy to the moon. Yeah. To interstellar right. yeah. Yeah. Oh, I know, yeah. adventure. Yes. Multiple wars, Ugh. the internet, the, the, the oh. amazing. The living receptacles of history, I guess, in a sense, that uh, all the stories they can tell. Yeah. But that's all part of why we're doing this, yeah. is the history. Because when they're gone, we don't get it back. Tell us a little bit more about when the, when the uh, project is complete, what will be the products that, that uh, we hope to produce? Well, Lucy and I have been talking about that, and that's still 
in the works, I would yeah, say? Yeah, I think so. We, I, I see three parts to it. First of all, an exhibit of the yeah. pictures. Mark is going to, they'll be enlarged to, what, 16... 11 by 17 are mounted yeah, on, six, yeah, eight you know, mounted. Uh, it's a large. In, yeah, yeah a beautiful prints. Enlargement of prints. And that they will be exhibited, we hope, at some kind of an opening event, mm -hmm. but then they'll be exhibited around the village around the for a village. while. Mm -hmm. So that's one part. And the second part would be the TV uh, broadcasts, and we have quite a bit of tape accumulated, so we don't know. So it could be as many as maybe three half hour programs of the interviews. It'll be running on Village Television. Would run on Village Television. Mm -hmm. And the third part then would hopefully would be the website and that's where where we look where the, we got the idea was from the web, from mm -hmm. from the Czech exhibit. And there's mm -hmm. by the way, there's another uh, American photographer, mm -hmm. uh, Tom Hussey, if you put that into Google, Tom Hussey Reflections, it's you'll find a uh, another variant. He's he has photographed centenary L L people over 100 looking at themselves in mirrors, but what they what comes back is a picture of them as, as a young person. Yeah. So you a lot of Photoshop it's, in that. Oh my gosh. But anyway, the third part of our thing would be online, uh, perhaps at the village website, and uh, with links to the uh, channel uh, to the uh, to television interviews, mm -hmm. yeah. which would probably be on YouTube. Well, I can't wait to see it all. It's uh, congratulations to all for. Uh, a, a wonderful concept and great execution of it. I know a whole lot of work has, has uh, gone into this, and uh, I, I think that we are all the richer uh, for these centenarians well, who live among us and for those of you who have made their lives more accessible to us. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, John. Very welcome.